It is also authentically narrated that the Mahdi will be given the oath of allegiance in front of the Kaaba itself, in between the black stone and the station of Ibrahim. In the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Abu Hurairah narrates that the Prophet وسلم, said, يُبَايَعُ لِرَجُلٍ بَيْنَ الرُّكْنِ وَالْمَقَامِ وَلَنْ يَسْتَحِلَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتَ إِلَّا أَهْلُهُ فَإِذَا اسْتَحَلُّوهُ فَلَا تَسْأَلْ عَنْ هَلَكَةِ الْعَرَبِ ثُمَّ تَأْتِ الْحَبَشَةِ فَيُخَرِّبُونَهُ خَرَابًا لَا يَعْمُرُ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَخْرِجُونَ كَنْزًا Beautiful hadith. This hadith is authentic according to Shaykh Ahmad Shakir and also Shaykh Al-Albani and before them Al-Hakim Ibn Hibban Al-Haythami. Many of the scholars declared this hadith to be authentic. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, a person shall be given the oath of allegiance between the rukun, meaning the black stone, and the maqam, meaning the station of Ibrahim. And no one shall make this house permissible, istihlal, except its own people. I'll explain what this means in a while. When they make it permissible, then do not ask about the destruction of the Arabs. And then an army shall come from Habasha, from Abyssinia, Ethiopia, and they will destroy it, meaning the Kaaba, a type of destruction that is so severe, it will never be rebuilt after it. And they shall be the ones who shall remove its treasure. Also, we quoted an earlier hadith in the Sunan of Abu Dawood where we said the Mahdi shall run from Medina to Mecca and the people will take him out of his house and force him to accept the oath of allegiance and that he will not want to accept it. And in that hadith, we didn't comment on it there, but it shows the humbleness and modesty of the Mahdi. It shows he will not want to be the leader. The people will force him. They will take him out of his house. They will take him to the Kaaba and they shall force him to take the oath of allegiance. He will not want to be their leader. This shows you the humbleness and the modesty of this Mahdi and that he shall realize the great responsibility that a leader carries. He will not want to be the leader or the Mahdi. The people will give him that title. The people will give him the oath of allegiance even though he will not want it upon himself. So this hadith clearly shows that the oath of allegiance will be given to the Mahdi in front of the Kaaba. And it appears, and Allah knows best, that after the miracle of the army being destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned that the army will be destroyed outside of Mecca, that the people will recognize that this person is indeed the Mahdi, and thus everyone will give bay'ah to him, even though he will not want it. It also shows you that all of this shall occur shortly before the end of time, because the Prophet wasallam said that after the coming of the Mahdi, a group will come from Abyssinia, and they shall destroy the Kaaba. And other narrations mention that the name of the man who does this will be the Suwaiqatain, and he shall come from Abyssinia. Just like Abraha marched before the coming of the Prophet ﷺ, the very year that the Prophet ﷺ was born, and he tried to destroy the Kaaba, and Allah protected it then, a person from his own ethnicity towards the end of time, the Suwaiqatain, will once again march, the same march that Abraha did many, many centuries and many, many years ago. And he shall also intend to destroy the Kaaba, but this time Allah will not protect it. And he shall allow the Suwaiqatain, this man from Habasha, from Abyssinia, to destroy the Kaaba, and he shall be the one who shall finally find this treasure that everyone had been looking for so for so many centuries. And he shall be the one who shall take it out and utilize it. But how will he utilize it when the day of judgment will literally be around the corner? This will occur, by the way, when there are no Muslims left. The Suwaiqatain will attack the Kaaba when there are no Muslims left. When Medina itself, as the Prophet ﷺ told us in other narrations, will be inhabited by dogs and wolves. When not a single person on the face of this earth will even say, Allah, in other words, immediately before the trumpet will be blown. Now, what is the meaning of the phrase, وَلَنْ يَسْتَحِلَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتَ إِلَّا أَهْلُهُ No one shall make this house permissible except its people. The meaning of this phrase, basically, as we know, the Kaaba and even the city of Mecca, it is called a haram, meaning that things are haram in it, which are otherwise allowed. And of the things that are haram in it is to fight and to carry weapons and to cause distress or evil to any person. Anyone who enters the haram, it becomes haram to inflict any evil or to capture him or to do anything to him. Yet the Prophet ﷺ predicted that there will be a group of people who will try to make it halal, istihlal, meaning that they will make this haram halal, meaning that they will violate the sanctity of the haram. 
And this is the meaning of yastahil. They will try to make this haram halal. They will try to break the sanctity of the haram. And he said these people will not be strangers. They will not be those who do not believe in Allah. They will be ahluhu, its own people. Meaning that these people shall be Muslims. The people who shall try to destroy the sanctity of the haram will be Muslims. And this is a beautiful, beautiful prophecy. Something that should make us happy. Why should it make us happy? Because this proves that the Kaaba shall never be attacked and taken over by those who do not profess Islam. Never shall non-Muslims be allowed victory over the Kaaba, over Mecca itself. Throughout Islamic history, Mecca and even the Kaaba has been attacked numerous times. But each and every time it was done at the hands of Muslims or those who professed Islam because sometimes it was done by extremely heretical groups such as when the Qaramita, the extreme Rafida Shia dynasty took over the Kaaba, they even took the Hajar Aswad, the black stone, and they took it back to Bahrain where they were. And the Kaaba remained for many years without the Hajar Aswad until finally it was returned to its place. But the point is, the people who attacked it claimed to be Muslims even though they were not Muslims. And in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam told us that no one will attack the Kaaba except people who believe in it. He also told us, the Prophet wasallam, that after the oath of allegiance is given, to this Mahdi, much blood will be shed. He said, when they try to attack the Mahdi, do not ask about the destruction of the arrows, meaning the destruction of the Muslims. Much blood will be shed. And this is an indication that the time of the Mahdi shall be a tumultuous and turbulent time. And this has already been indicated in the hadith before, which states that the Mahdi will come at a time of great evil, great tyranny, great oppression, great injustice. And this merely affirms that which has preceded. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that the Habasha will come and destroy the Kaaba towards the end of time. Now, doesn't this just contradict what we just said, that only the Muslims will attack the Kaaba? How can the Prophet ﷺ say that only its people shall try to attack it? And then in the same hadith he says, the Habasha will come and destroy the Kaaba. The response is that that is why the Prophet ﷺ said it in this very hadith, showing us that the general rule is that only Muslims shall attack the Kaaba, but there shall come a time when there will be no Muslims. And when that time comes, then the Suwaiqatayn will come with the Habasha and he will destroy the Kaaba. So the only time the Kaaba shall be attacked by non-Muslims is when there are no Muslims on the face of this earth. Getting back to the Hadith of the Mahdi, and also we mentioned before, there seems to be some slight difference between where the Mahdi shall come from, Medina or Khurasan. After we've quoted all of these ahadith, let us now propose a different theory which seems to combine all of the narrations that have preceded. A careful examination of these two sets of ahadith, the first set of which says that he shall come from Medina, the second says that the army shall come from Khurasan. A careful examination shows that the ahadith that mention that he shall come from Khurasan do not actually mention that the Mahdi shall come from Khurasan. Rather, the hadith only mentions that an army bearing a black flag shall march from Khurasan or from the east towards Mecca. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, when you see that army, give them allegiance for they shall have the Mahdi. It doesn't say the Mahdi shall come from Khurasan. It says the army shall come from Khurasan, from the lands of the east. And when you see the army, where will you see the army? Perhaps in Mecca and Medina. That is the sign that this person that they march for shall be the Mahdi. So if someone were to say, and this appears to be the strongest way to reconcile all of these hadith and Allah knows best, that the Mahdi shall actually be from Medina and he shall flee to Mecca. Why shall he flee? Because of all the fitna, all of the tribulation, all of the chaos. He shall flee to Mecca and he shall try to hide somewhere in his house wherever people will extract him from his house. They shall force him to accept the oath of allegiance between the Rukun and the Maqam and an army shall be sent out to fight him and that army shall be destroyed by Allah. The earth will swallow him up. At the same time, another army with black flags shall set out from the east, from Khurasan maybe, to protect him. And the Prophet says, when you see all of this, then realize this is the Mahdi. In other words, when all of these signs have come, when a person comes from Medina to Mecca, when you see that the army has been swallowed up by the earth, that another army comes to defend the Mahdi, this is the clear sign. This is when it is obligatory upon you to give your allegiance to him. Even if you have to crawl over snow and ice to reach him, do so. So, 
The ahadith that mention that the black flags will march from Khorasan, really if you ponder over them precisely, they do not mention that the Mahdi will come from Khorasan or from the east. They mention that an army shall come from the east. And the Prophet says, when you see them, then give your allegiance to him. When will you see them? Perhaps, and this is one interpretation, you will see them in Mecca and Medina. So when that army reaches Mecca and Medina, and the Mahdi is already in Mecca from Medina, that is when all of the signs have been perfected that this is the Mahdi. You are obliged to follow him at this point in time. Before these signs, you are not obliged to follow him. You are not sure whether this person really is the Mahdi or not. After these signs, when Allah destroys the army that has come to attack him, and when Allah sends another army from the east with black flags, and that he is in the house of the Kaaba from Medina, when you see these signs, then have no doubt that this indeed is the Mahdi.